Can a neurosurgeon help in the management of diabetes? I have a 56 year old male who presents to my office with burning pain in his legs. The symptoms begin from the knee down and it's quite intense in his feet. He describes it as a stinging and burning pain that is worse when things touch it like the sheets at night. He even has a hard time wearing socks and shoes because of this pain. Now his primary care doctor has started him on medications like Lyrica and Gabapentin and those medications really haven't helped him. This is his lumbar MRI, and he states that he really doesn't have a lot of back pain. The pain is most intense in his legs. Now his past medical history is significant for a 10 year history of diabetes. He states when he was first diagnosed, he didn't really take good care of his blood sugar, but more recently his blood sugar has been pretty well maintained. His neurological examination is significant for decreased sensation from the knee down, and he's even starting to get a little decreased sensation in his fingertips on both sides. So what do you guys think the diagnosis is? And is there any type of treatment in which a neurosurgeon may become involved in? Stay tuned tomorrow and I'll go through the whole case. Can a neurosurgeon help with diabetic peripheral neuropathy? In yesterday's case study, I presented the case of a 56 year old male who came to me with pain in both legs. The pain was from the knees down and he described it as like a fire-like burning pain as well as tingling. I actually tricked you guys with his lumbar MRI because this has nothing to do with it. He does have some degenerative disc disease in his lower back, but that's not causing his pain. He did have a 10 year history of diabetes, which is incredibly important. He stated that he didn't keep his blood sugars well controlled early on in his diagnosis. He has the diagnosis of painful diabetic peripheral neuropathy. If you have diabetes for a long time, it can actually cause nerve damage long term. It typically affects the legs starting in our feet because that is the longest nerves in our body. The nerves in our legs can tell our brain what we feel in our feet. And if for some reason the conduction of those nerves is messed up, we can't understand what we're actually feeling in our feet. That's called neuropathy and neuropathy can actually be painful. So much so that things that touch the feet can be incredibly painful, like the sheets at night or even socks and shoes. Now, diabetic neuropathy can be diagnosed clinically, but it can also be detected by what's called an EMG or a nerve conduction study. Once a diagnosis is made, we typically do try to maximize medical treatment such as gabapentin and Lyrica, which are medications that help mitigate those symptoms. What happens or what can we do if that doesn't work? That's when a neurosurgeon may help. How is that? That's through a treatment called spinal cord stimulation, which many of you guys may have heard of. I know what you're thinking, spinal cord stimulation can't work for this. Actually it can. There has been significant advancements in the technology of spinal cord stimulation and has been recently FDA approved for diabetic peripheral neuropathy. In HFX 10 kilohertz technology, you can see that the pain scores before SCS is 7.7 out of 10 on the pain scale and after stimulation 1.7. That is impressive. Well, that's cool, but how does it work? Basically what we do is we can implant these leads in the mid thoracic region around T9 and T10. With the high frequency stimulation, it can override our body's perception of what our legs feel. Therefore telling our brain that we actually don't feel the pain. Isn't that weird? There's a small battery that we implant under the skin that actually controls the stimulation. And the patient can use this remote to turn the stimulation up or down. Medicine is so cool because we have all this new technology that we can use to help patients that we could use to no longer help. The man that I presented at the beginning of the video underwent a five day temporary trial of the spinal cord stimulation and he received excellent relief of his symptoms and underwent an outpatient implantation of the device by me. His pain is no longer bothering him and he can do the things that he used to not be able to do. Stay tuned next week and I'll go through another case. Have a wonderful week.